Behind me is Bagridge Country Park and it's located between Wolverhampton and Dudley in the Black Country in the West Midlands uh, in the United Kingdom. It's a big park, it covers about 150 acres, about the size of 85 football fields. Coal mining in the Black Country has a long, long history and it goes back to at least the 1200s and the 1300s. There's evidence of bell pits, the earliest system of underground coal mining uh, in this area. So if we take a conservative estimate, we can say that mining went on here for around 700 years. And this is the place this long history came to an end. It's the site of Baggeridge Colliery. It closed on the 5th of March 1968. This place means a lot to me because my dad, Eric Williams, was the last manager of Baggeridge Colliery. The place we're now at is the site of uh, Baggeridge Brickworks. And this is Baggeridge Stack. It's the remaining industrial building from Baggeridge Bricks and it's a, a landmark in the surrounding area. Uh, this is Bagridge Craft Village and it's a, a relatively new development. We'll take a walk through three of my favourite places here at Bagridge. Uh, there's the site of the old colliery, the former slag heaps and the Earl of Dudley's crest beds. This is First Street and this was the main street to the brickworks and the colliery. You can see Bagridge Craft Village and the stack in front of us. And as we follow First Street down, what we'll see is the old entrance to the right to the colliery. Um, the sign with Bagridge Colliery is the stores. And this is what it looked like in 1968. So we'll follow First Street down. As we pass the gate, a little red arrow will show. And this is the site. These are the old pit slag heaps where we'll be going after we visited the colliery. So we'll turn to the right. And as we turn to the right, the stores were to our left and the main office buildings, somewhere where these yellow bins are, were the office buildings. And as you enter the colliery, in front of us then were a number of constructions. The boiler stack, the downcast shaft headgear, the lamp house and behind that the upcast shaft headgear and the baths. So now we're at the other end of the, of this part of the present car park. And swinging round, we can see the site of the downcast uh, shaft headgear and the buildings that we just saw in the last photo. And again, the entrance to the quarry, which is now on the right. And right in front of us were the main office buildings. The smaller building with the three windows uh, was the manager's office and that was my dad's office. And this is a picture of him taken in that office. Uh, he was exhausted as you can see and he'd been fighting an underground fire for 48 hours.
So walking back towards the site of the former walkway for the miners uh, to the downcast cast shaft, we can see the land. The land dips away and uh, it's now the site of a children's playground. And then moving to the other side of the lamp house and the baths, we're still on the car park and looking back we can see the Bagri stack once again at the former brickworks. And this is a photo of the winding house uh, behind the downcast shaft and the stockyards and the stockyards and the red arrow shows the slag heaps. And now we're on the lower level of the car park in front of the children's playground. And this photo shows the winding house again to the left and the upcast shaft in about the same area. So now we'll come to the second part of the visit, uh, the old pit slag heaps. So they're still quite black underfoot but very different today. Um, this, it's the haunt of birds, wildlife, dog walkers and there's some fantastic views from the top. We're going to follow the red line on this map from here down to what is now called the back pool and then take the steep climb up to the top of skull, uh, this round structure depicted here. So we'll go down under the old railway bridge and we'll go down to the back pool. under the bridge and then in front of us is the pool As we turn from the pool, we'll see the start of the 
climb up to the toposcope. Uh, it's a fairly long climb to the toposcope from here. It's quite steep too, so we'll speed things up a little bit. So, Pew made it. And this is the toposcope. And let's take a look at the views uh, from here. So in the foreground, we can see the path we came up. And we're looking towards the Clee Hills and the Long Mend in Shropshire towards Wales. And then here are the car parks that we visited before, over to the old entrance to the colliery. Again, the stack, which would lead further on to Wolverhampton. And then we'll come over and we can see Sedgley Beacon. And then the spire of All Saints Parish Church in Sedgley. This brings us then, as we swing round, we'll be looking over towards Dudley. And then over towards Starbridge and the Clent Hills and the Malvern Hills. And we'll come back to the path that we just came up. Well we've dropped down again now and we've gone over to the crest beds that were owned by the Earl of Dudley. Uh, Bagridge Colliery was um, established by the Earl of Dudley in 1902 and it was on his land that was adjacent to his family hall at uh, Himley Hall. Uh, Bagridge Country Park now lies on parkland 
uh, for H Himley Hall that was landscaped by Capability Brown uh, for the Earl of Dudley. And these were the crest beds built in the 19th century uh, to provide fresh watercress uh, for meals for the family and guests at Hem Himley Hall. Uh, the water comes from an underground spring and provides a steady flow of clear, fresh water to grow the watercress. Uh, Himley Hall was used by the National Coal Board uh, when I was a kid and I can remember Dad bringing us here. And it was very different then, it was very quiet, isolated. Um, and as a kid I found it quite dark and foreboding in a way. So that about finishes the trip to the old colliery, slag heaps, the watercress beds. I'd like to finish with some music, showing you a few impressions of this wonderful park. Thanks very much for watching. Please leave a comment if you enjoyed this. Like and subscribe.